Can you hear the anguish in Jesus' voice? Can you see the sweat covering his face, falling to the ground? Can you see the crater each drop creates in the earth around him? Father, please, if you are willing, not this way. Jesus is about to be betrayed by Judas and arrested. He will be denied. He will be tried. He will be sentenced to death, killed on a cross. Yet in his prayer, Jesus tells God he is willing to yield. He is prepared to give in to God's will. After he's done praying, Jesus gets up and he returns to his disciples. He asks them to pray, but he finds them sleeping, worn out by their own grief. Get up, he tells them, and pray. Jesus prays more in Luke than any other gospel. He prays after his baptism. He prays before choosing his 12 disciples. Luke tells us he prays all night. He prays at the transfiguration. He prays from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And this is the only gospel where the disciples ask Jesus to teach them to pray. Jesus teaches them the Lord's Prayer. Then he tells them a parable about being persistent in prayer. And when Jesus and the disciples reach the Mount of Olives, he says to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. When Jesus finishes praying and wakes up the disciples, he says it again, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. We pray this too. Lead us not into temptation, we pray, just as Jesus teaches. And God doesn't lead us to temptation. As Luther says in the small catechism, that is the work of the devil, the world, and our own sinful selves. But each of us faces trials and temptations. We are tempted every day to yield to our own will. We are tempted to yield to the kingdom of this world and the comforts it promises. Some of us might be tempted to cheat on homework. Tempted to make fun of the kid who sits alone at lunch because it is just socially safer to join the crowd. Tempted to lie to grown-ups. Tempted to peek at our phones during class or a conversation. Tempted to check one more time to see if we were liked, loved, retweeted, or shared. Maybe we're tempted to fudge a little on our tax forms. Tempted to cut corners at work to boost profits, make deadline or just get home in time for dinner for once. Tempted to ignore the suffering in our community and world, to drive on by, to change the channel. We are tempted and we are tried. We are tried by debt, disease, doubt, the decline of our bodies, the dismantling of our sense of community, in trials, temptations, and hardships, how do we commit to following Jesus? How do we yield to God's will when it is so tempting to yield to the world or yield to our own will? What if we're not even sure what God's will is? 
Jesus teaches his disciples, and he teaches us to pray, to follow his example. On the Mount of Olives, Jesus asks God to take away the suffering that is to come. But Jesus is devoted to God, and he yields to God's will. So he finishes praying, and he gets up. He is betrayed and arrested, and he is killed on the cross. But this, this is not God's will. The resurrection reveals to us that God's will is not death, but life. God's will is life and liberation, freedom from the temptations and trials that hold us captive, freedom from the injustices and indignities that bind us. That has been the story from the beginning of this gospel. We hear it in Mary's song, praising God. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with food and sent the rich away empty. And we heard it in Zechariah's prophecy after the birth of his son, John. The dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death. At the word of Jesus, a paralyzed man stands up and walks home. A widow's only son is raised from death to life. People with diseases are healed, liberated for life in community. God wills for us to follow Jesus on this liberating, life-giving mission. There will be trials and temptations along the way. Jesus faced trials and temptations. He told the disciples they would too. Before Jesus and the disciples went to the Mount of Olives, Jesus predicted that Peter would be tempted and would deny him. But Jesus also says, Peter, I have prayed for you. Prayed that your own faith may not fail. Prayed that when you have turned back to me, you will strengthen your brothers. At the Mount of Olives, Jesus tells the disciples to pray, and instead they fall asleep. But Jesus doesn't leave them there. He says, get up and pray. Jesus modeled this for the disciples. He models it for us. When Jesus prefers his own will, but remains devoted to God and God's will, in that struggle, Jesus prays. Throughout his earthly life, Jesus prayed. He taught the disciples about prayer. He prayed for them. He encouraged them to pray, and he encourages us to pray. As disciples of Jesus, we follow his example. When we are tempted and tried, we can pray, trusting that God hears us and will strengthen us so we can proceed. When you are afraid, when you are uncertain, when you don't know what God wants from you, when you know what God wants from you and it just seems too hard, when it's so tempting to yield to your own will, pray. Pray persistently and boldly and honestly, just like Jesus did. And don't just pray in times of trial and temptation. 
Pray when you need to make an important decision. Pray when you need to forgive someone. Pray when you need forgiveness. Pray for your friends. Praise God in prayer. Pray like Jesus did. God wants this conversation with us. Prayer helps us detect God's activity in the world. It helps us become aware of God's will for our lives and our lives together. Prayer strengthens us for what lies ahead. Prayer aligns us with God's purposes. So pray like Jesus. Pray and get up with the strength to proceed. Ready to experience the liberation and life that God wills for us and for our neighbors. Even if there will be hardships along the way. You don't need fancy words to pray like Jesus. And if you don't have any words, pray the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Pray, trusting that God hears you, that God loves you. Pray knowing that whatever anguish you are feeling, Jesus has felt it too. You are not alone. We remember this when we pray in community. So would you pray with me now? God, you know the ways we are tempted and tried. You know how we wish to yield to our own will. Remind us to follow Jesus by persisting in prayer. Strengthen us to trust in your will. Help us to trust that your will is for good, for liberation, for life. For this we give thanks. Amen.